Hey, hello, Bradley Sowash here with my monthly piano improv tip of the month. Today's tip of the month is about scaling the chords. It's a, it's a phrase that I made up to describe a process that I love to use to introduce first-time improvisers to the world of feeling free at your instrument without written music. But it's also usable at many levels. I use it in my all my online uh, piano lessons, all my online group teaching piano lessons. I use it in all my books. I use it in all my workshops. In fact, there's a good chance some of you have heard it before. The concept, if you are here as an adult pianist uh, who is a hobby pianist that, um, and enjoying playing on the page and would like to loosen up a little bit, you um, will find this useful. If you are a music teacher on any instrument, uh, I'm going to be piano-centric, but it works on any instrument, and you have some uh, knowledge of uh, teaching chords and theory and scales to your students, you can use this to help them improvise as well. So this is a little bit about the um, doing it yourself and a little bit about the pedagogy of how you would use this in your own, own lessons. So here are three things that ought to be a part of every um, practice session, or most, and should be part of uh, every music lesson. And that is simply uh, scales, chord drills, and scales and chords together creatively in that process I call scaling the chords. So uh, I've written a lot about how to play scales and given many creative exercises on that, and you can dig into that um, further, if you like, um, by looking around on BradleySowash.com um, in the store, there's an area called Music and Theory Style Books. And if you would, uh, if you take a look there, there's a, a more, much more detail about scaling the chords that I'm talking about today there. Um, so that would cover what, a good way to practice scales in a process I call squared scales. I'm going to skip that right now. And then I also have um, chord drills, things like this. <laughs> So moving around the circle of fourths on triads, it's a lot of great chord um, exercises. Practicing chords chromatically, changing, um, changing uh, the quality of the chord. You, if you're like, what was that? What was that? That's not the focus of today. I'm just saying those need to be part of your regular practice and your regular teaching. So that is um, scales and chords. But the, the magic comes when you combine those. And this is just a simple, uh, easy to grab set of steps that will get you improvising or get a student improvising who's reluctant. You know, the scariest thing is if somebody says, uh, let's be creative, let's just be creative right now. Uh, you know, draw a nice picture. Oh, what, a, what am I supposed to do? Uh, you know, let's, let's play some creative piano music. Okay, let's say, and you know, you're not as experienced as I am. What do I do? I don't know. Do I go up or down? What's my rhythm? I'm completely lost because it's too wide open. People like to have a few rules to get themselves going along, moving through. And so um, what we're going to do is we're going to play scales in our left hand, or if you're teaching in a setting where you have a group, students on something like violin in a Suzuki class, or any group of musicians, you can have some musicians arpeggiate, while other musicians um, improvise and then take turns. So you're going to play a set of diatonic, that means in the key. Play a set of simple diatonic chords in the left hand. We're not looking to, to do this right now on, on a you know, complex jazz song with lots of key changes or unusual chords. We're just going to do it in a real simple environment. And I'm going to use, to keep it extra simple, just C major. And I'm going to use the 1, 4, and 5 chord. So here's a C chord. Let's go down and show those fingers there. You know, I'm just going to play the standard way everybody learns it. C. E, G, C, F, A. If this were a lesson, I'd be able to show you a nice overhead of my fingers there, but this being Facebook, I have not that capability. And then the five chord, B, D, G. So we could do that here. We could do it in another inversion. C, F, C, G, C, or higher. C, F, C, G, C. So just make sure you know your chords. Now you're thinking of your left hand. This is my, my sort of um, rules person. This is my dot the I's and cross the T's, um, file everything correctly, you know, be orderly. This is my organized part of my brain. It plays the chords at the right time. 
The, the right hand, however, is the free spirit part of the brain. In, in this exercise, the right hand is sort of a wander around, you know, um, free spirit who loves to just explore and follow their nose. So, the, so this person plans their whole vacation down to what they're eat, where, gonna, where they're going to eat and where they um, are going to what they're going to tour and exactly what time they're going to do everything. That's the left hand. The right hand goes to a new city and follows their nose and sees what what happens. So this is the creative hand. This is the providing the basis for that creativity because we all know that without planners everything falls apart and yet planners benefit by some of the spontaneity and fun that creative people bring. So we can make it metaphorical here. So all we're going to do is hold down those chords in the left hand. I'm just going to play C like this. C for four measures. F and C and then G and then we're going to go to C up to F here I have two chords in the measure, C, G, C, and it could be any chord progression, this is just a good one, um, and you can do it in any key. So I'm using that as a basis, I'm going to go ahead and pull up a backing track that I made using the app called iRealPro, I-R-E-A-L-P-R-O, um, or I could just use the drum sounds on my piano, or I could just um, you know play without any rhythm, but since I like rhythm, I'm going to go ahead and put on just a little backing track here to make that a little bit more fun. It sounds like this. And here's my F, and back to C, and I'm gonna go down to G, and then back to C, up to F. Here's that double measure, I have a C and a G. C, cha-cha-cha. All right, so the that's the basis, is make sure that that's super solid. You wanna have that um, just automatically in your hands there. Um, as you go. In the right hand, I'm just going to play this scale. So I'm going to play a C major scale. So simple here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to repeat the top note of the scale. Um, just to show you that. Um, that way make, it comes out even. Since scales have seven notes in them and we're in 4-4 four, four time, we're going to square it off. So it sounds like this. And then instead of turning right around as is typical, I'll just repeat that top note. And to go back up, I'll do it repeat it again. So instead of this, Gonna do this. Top note, bottom note, twice. So there's two on each end. That makes it come out evenly. Um, so we're just playing familiar chords and just remembering where to plug them in. Putting them right at the top of the measure, right where they go. If you're a teacher, you can coach this by calling the next chord out, kind of like a fitness instructor who might call it out in a um, you know a, a step class. So I might say like this: C. F is next. Here comes C. And then there's G, back to C, or I might call it a four chord, back to one, and then a five. Okay, so that's basically just laying the, the, the groundwork for that. And then we're going to take this through a couple creative steps. Just take a minute um, to, to, to talk about, before we do that, what we're doing with those, why this is so important. I think it's so important that I put it in all of my books, all of them. So here is my for beginner keyboard method called Creative Chords, keyboard improvisation method. And in this book on page 41 is an entire unit, that's what we call chapters in this book, an entire, I don't know, 10, 12, 20 pages all about scaling the chords. So it's a huge part of the way I teach and then in this book it's in major and you can do this in minor as well. So in, in the second book in this beginning keyboard improvisation method called creative chords. Maybe you have this. So go to page 9 and you'll find that it now deals with the same concept which I'll explore further in A minor. So you can do this in any modality. And then um, it's also all through this uh, That's Jazz book uh, series um, and I will touch on that and how that's used in there in a minute. So the first step, and we're, again we're not after music yet, is to keep it um, Random. We're going to randomize the right hand, and the, and the way we're going to randomize that is only with direction changes. We're going to just change direction. So you could say to an extremely page-oriented classical musician, play the scale, but just whenever you want, change direction. It might sound like this. Up, down, I'll go up for a while, oh, maybe I'll go down, up, back up. It's completely random, I don't care about the fingering. The only thing that's important is not to stop literally just wandering around. I have no interest in whether it sounds good, uh, that you can assure yourself or your student that that is um, not the key right now. The key here is to practice the strange schizophrenia that goes on in an improvising piano player's brain 
with chords in one hand and and freedom in the other hand. Or in an ensemble, have somebody uh, chording with you know double stops or, or worked out the chords with boom whackers, anything you, you have around. Or if instruments work well for this, while well, one person is exploring the scale. So we're, really, it's not going to sound great yet. It's just going to sound kind of um, ongoing. But what's happening is I'm loosening up the idea that my right hand is free. Let's listen to that one time. One, two, ready, go. ended on a note that wouldn't sound so great. I ended on a C chord and I played an F. I, some of you who have some theory background are thinking, you can't just put any notes over any chord. And the answer is yes, you can, as long as you all's well that ends well. So I'm on a C chord here, C, D, G, and I deli deliberately made, quote, a mistake by ending on an F. But here's the great secret. You're only ever one note away from a better note. So if I just simply move up, that takes me to a G, that puts me in the chord, it sounds good. And if I go down, it puts me on an E, that's in the chord, it sounds good. So if you don't like your ending note, just go one step in either direction and it'll fix it. And that happens all the time for improvisers. You can make a big deal out of it. Right? Uh, so, so if you don't like the last note or, or the note that hits the chord, you just change it, especially when you're hanging out on a long note. Okay, so the first thing we did was we played scale with the top and bottom note doubled. The second thing we did was change direction randomly just to get used to one hand being free and one hand not. The next thing we're going to do is add in some long notes. And I just use the word long notes as a way of um, not over-directing it. So I'm not saying quarter notes. I'm not saying half notes or dotted quarters. I'm just saying just pause once in a while. Let's put that random change of direction and the long notes together with this. Maybe I'll pause right there. But notice that the chords still go where they go. Pause. Pause. Real long pause. And then I'll do that again. Random changes of direction, and, I, and I'll hang out. So whenever you feel like it, just stop. Okay. I'm trying to, to keep this as unmusical as possible, because ideally I demonstrate that with to you with somebody who is a reluctant improviser to show that it works. I'm trying to actually make it sound not all that interesting, so that that's what might happen. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm ignoring the chord tones, I'm ignoring some of my favorite licks, I'm just wandering around. I hope that's coming through. So we've, we've played the chords and the scale together. We played the chords and random changes of direction, and we played the chords and the scale with random changes of direction and pauses. The next step is to add leaps. Notice I use the word leaps because that can be any size. I don't say skips, which implies thirds. Um, a leap is anything bigger than a second in my book. So it just when you feel like it, jump a little bit around your keyboard or from one note to another, always sticking to the scale. So whenever I feel like it, I'll just make a bigger jump. Maybe G to C or maybe G clap to an octave or... You know, I can do sixes, but it's not going to be a sequence of that, just now and then. Wandering, changing direction, pausing sometimes, and leaps. There's some leaps. So the steps we've done so far is we played the scale with the chords, we added random changes of direction, we added long notes, and now we've added leaps. The last step is to throw out all the rules and make music. 
So now we're actually going to try to own these steps and get them a little bit more internalized and, and, and see where our ear will take us, having loosened up the creative gears to do that. All right, here we go. So let's warm up on, or let's just get more creative here. I'll try to be a better player here this time. But still, That was a reasonable um, simulation of how an improviser would then take and own these steps and internalize them. So what I do when I teach is, is that, that you work on this for the key at hand, for the repertoire at hand. If we're, lose, if we're using a key at, of C major for a tune we're learning, we'll go ahead and use that scale to you know, get the notes in our fingers. And then just explore it with the chords at hand. And if next week or next month we're on a key of D or G or something, we'll do the same exercise in that key. Um, but now, once you understand that exercise, you can have some fun with it. One thing you can do is change the groove. So let's say we switch to a, a swing feel on this. Um, and by the way, if you're a teacher, you would support this with some low bass notes. Let me just talk about that, maybe roots and fifths. So pretend this my right hand is, is the student's left hand, and my left hand is the teacher's hand. I might do this. So you can kind of make a bass line um, or some kind of support, even just something like one note. You know, just to provide some rhythmic support um, in the absence of a backing track. So one of the things you can do with iReal Pro So Cool is we can change the, um, the groove. I'm going <laughs> to just take one here. Let's see what would happen if we put this under... R and B. Let's just see what that does to my improv. Randomly grabbing that. So the, that that fun backing track, you know, kind of led me to to explore other sounds. I had it on just a simple rock one before. I don't know. Let's see what disco would sound like. Disco groove made me want to, you know, be more staccato. So we can we can take it like in, into that realm of um, using different backing tracks. But we can also change the chords. So, for example, you could do heart and soul chords. Everybody knows that. I wish that had never been invented because every band director and every music teacher is so tired of hearing that. But it is kind of exciting the first time you discover it, and they're very useful. Um, so hard on teachers, good on learners. Um, I'm going to do that with a swing feel. Let's put it on a medium upswing, and I'm going to use C, A minor, F, and G. Something like... So I have C, A minor, F, G. Okay, so I got there. You know, this is just exploring the steps, having already taken those earlier steps to scale the chords. So here's C, G, A minor, and F, the first four chords in Let It Be. course you can do it in minor keys as well. So I'll show you one more tip on this scaling the chords just to make it a little bit more um, challenging. That's jazz book one. Here I am in a tune called Burrito Cha Cha and it has this challenge on page 20 to scale the chords this time over a bass line. So this particular tune has a little bass line based on those same chords C, F, and G but instead of playing chords we're going to play a bass line. So that's C and G, the notes C and G for the F chord, basically just taking the chord but playing the outside edges. C, A, C, C, G, C. Here's 
my chord. B, D, B. So it's a little bass line based on, um, you know, based on those chords. I'll do it first with a scale. Okay, now let's do it with um, random changes of direction. And now just free. Scaling the chords should be a part of every lesson. Scales, chords, scaling the chords, the whole process, once you get it down, it takes about five minutes, three minutes even, just to zip through it. Um, it's just a kind of a daily greasing of your of your elbows for this stuff, and there you can also do it with seventh chords or more complicated progressions. And I get into that in that book I mentioned, the sort of an e-book. It's a PDF called Scaling the Chords on my website. If you want to drill down further and learn how to make this more advanced, I wrote a, a little um, book about that. So one more invitation. I really would love to have you join us. Our our online music lessons, online jazz piano lessons are so much fun. They're group lessons, they're live, and there's three parts to them that make them much different than a usual lesson. You have, it's more like a college course. We have a very active Facebook group, which is like the lab where people share their practice videos and comment, and I give you daily instructor feedback. You have access to me five days a week through that Facebook group. Then there's the lectures, demonstrations themselves. That's the class, which we do uh, every fortnight. You also have a video replay that you can watch over and over. Um, and the last part is the uh, extensive resource page. So it's, they're much more than a, just a sort of ordinary lesson. Dig into Scaling the Chords. Explore it right now. It's really easy and you'll find that because there are some rules in between um, improvising and actually improvising. <laughs> in other words, because there's some steps, that it just loosens the gears and gets things going. And when you or the student have this feeling, do I have to take those steps after doing it 10 times, you know, different lessons, you're going to go, no, you don't need those steps. Go straight to the fun part. This is just to get you there. Until next time, enjoy your creative music making journey. <laughs>